The Star Wars universe has always been a fantastical mystery to me. Growing up, I was obsessed with the concept of Jedi Knights, Sith Lords, and the balance of the Force. At that time, I thought, yes, this is what Star Wars is. As I've grown older and seen more and more releases of new Jedi and Force-sensitive beings, I feel like I've lost touch to my connection with the worlds and stories being shown. It wasn't until I really started focusing on the other side stories that I was able to recapture my love and truly understand what makes this universe great. Don't get me wrong, the Jedi are amazing and I love learning more about the Force, but what truly resonates with me is what all the regular Joes are doing to survive in this messed up and underworld driven culture. It might be controversial, but journeys like we see in Rogue One and Solo are among my favorites, especially because they capture the aftermath of the Republic and show people just trying to get by while hiding from the Empire. This is the feeling that I was looking for when booting up Star Wars Outlaws for the first time and I have to say that it has delivered through my 10 hours of plays so far. Witnessing and navigating through clashing underworld factions firsthand is an excellent perspective. I'm excited to see where this epic takes us as we planet hop around the Outer Rim. I'd like to thank Ubisoft for providing me with access to this game. With that, let's hop into some of the details. Let's jump! In Star Wars Outlaws, you play as K Vess, an in-training scoundrel and thief who gets her shot in the world at showing what she's capable of. She's accompanied by her fuzzy axolotl friend Nyx, who is small, nimble, and willing to bite some stormtroopers in the face. These two are the making of an iconic duo, reminiscent of Han Solo and Chewbacca. They might not be as rough and gruff as the OG duo, but they come with their own combo of charisma and deceit. Kay and Nyx tend to lead towards the shadows as they quietly maneuver through Imperial compounds or territories owned by one of the four factions. You can choose to navigate these scenarios head on, but I found the stealth approach to be much more effective. While Kay is equipped with a modular blaster, her and Nyx can be quite deadly in hand-to-hand -hand combat. In my initial hours, I admittedly felt overwhelmed by Kay and her blaster. The combat felt one-dimensional since there's only so much you can do with lasers. However, I discovered that this game seems to be heavily anchored on your little alien friend Nyx. Nyx is an extremely functional being, able to distract opponents, blow up canisters, drop hanging objects, and bite faces. The list goes on and is definitely what the combat is centered around. Once I started exploring all of his capabilities, I started opening up combat strategies that I could use if I found myself in a pinch. If there is anything that I could stress about in this game, it would be to use Nyx as much as possible. Outside of the combat, you'll find yourself exploring the world and cities on various planets. Inside the cities, you can expect to find gambling, illegal exchanges, and enjoyable food minigames. These are actually pretty fun to watch and play as they have quick time events at random points. They create a great window to watch Kay and Nyx display their companionship. It's one of the few times in the game where you get to sit down and calmly enjoy some peace without the fear of getting shot in the back by a bounty hunter. But after you finish your meal, you'll be walking back into dark alleyways attempting to steal information with your data spike. These cities definitely take a step back from the combat and dive even deeper into the role of a sneaky scoundrel who is trying to steal as much data and credits as possible. You'll have the opportunities to interact with faction members in hopes to gain their trust, which you'll want to do with at least one faction. High trust leads to safe areas and close allies. Low trust means people just want to kill you at every corner. Not a very safe way to live. Most missions have choices with outcomes that will be appreciated by one faction and disliked by another. It's a constant balance to ensure that you're staying friends with the right people. Beyond the city walls, there are wide open areas and landmarks for you to explore on your speeder. There are treasures, quests, towns, and various factions layered throughout these zones for you to explore. I found a lot of enjoyment traveling around and finding out what planet natives had to offer in regards to information or some extra credits. There are components that are needed to upgrade your abilities, ship, and speeder, and these areas are the primary source to find them. You also have your own personal spaceship, which you can use to explore the orbit of planets. In orbit, you'll find various space stations, ships, and points of interest that you can interact with to help gain even more materials. However, there are space bandits prepared to attack you on site, so you'll need to be careful. Your spaceship is very capable at maneuvering and fighting back. I found the controls to be a little difficult as I would spin around in circles as I was trying to turn left or right. I wasn't able to change the orientation of which stick direction did what in the settings. I'm sure I'll get used to it soon as I haven't spent too much time piloting my ship, but the ability to have some extra customization settings would have been nice. You'll progressively get stronger throughout the game as you are able to unlock and upgrade Kay's abilities. These abilities are unlocked by meeting different experts in the Outer Rim. Some help your personal skills, others may help you become extra stealthy. In addition to this, what Kay equips provides different advantages and gameplay bonuses. You can adjust your shirt, pants, and gun holster to activate powerful bonuses. 
You also have charm slots that come with their own buffs. Even Nyx can have special treats which make him react certain ways out in the world. I still have plenty more to experience in the world of Star Wars Outlaws. Each gaming session has led my experience to grow deeper and my interest to become even more invested. Starting out, the game felt a little slow as I was introduced to a wide variety of interactions available. The tutorial area quickly led to the starting world, which still felt like another tutorial for a few hours. Once I was left to my own devices and I understood the direction with Nyx, everything started to fall into place. I can safely say that through 10 hours, Star Wars Outlaws has achieved expectations and earned the Pillow Fort stamp of approval. It's lining up to be one of my favorite titles of 2024, and I can't wait to experience the rest of it. Thanks for watching. If you are planning on exploring the Star Wars universe as an outlaw, let me know in the comments below. Once again, a big thanks to Ubisoft for providing me with access to the game. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and consider subscribing so that you can stay up to date on our latest content.